You know what's better than a monthly TBR? A seasonal TBR, and that's what I have for you today. I have a big stack of books here that I plan to read this spring. It's a little bit ambitious, perhaps, but I'm also in the mindset that I'll read more than this. So this is future Holly's problem. These are all must reads for me. I cannot go into summer without having finished these. That's the goal. But before we get into these books, I want to thank Basmo app for working with me today and sponsoring today's video. I worked with them a couple years ago, but they came to me today with a brand new feature they've added to their app that I think is super cool and unique to other bookish apps. If you didn't know, Basmo app is like a souped up Goodreads. You can catalog your library, it tracks your reading habits, keeps all of your statistics, but now you can chat with a book using AI and ask it questions. If there's a book that catches your eye with a beautiful cover, you can ask what the book is about, what the setting is, what ask what tropes it has and it will tell you. In fact, I went on the app and asked what tropes Witch King by Martha Wells is going to have and it gave me um, this big list that it made me way more excited about um, the book than I already was before. I think this is so helpful and truly the ultimate move that makes Basmo differentiate from other reading apps. There are so many cool things you can do with this, even ask the book to summarize a certain chapter. Finally, there's a cure to my brain fog. You can download this app today through the Apple Store or Google Play and go to any book that is in their database and start interrogating it with questions. I will say with how much I've messed around with it, it all seemed very accurate and was giving me legit answers to my questions. So I hope you guys have fun with that. Thank you Basmo app for working with me today. Now onto the books. Now most of these books are new releases slash upcoming releases because I do like to prioritize the new stuff as a booktuber, but I'd like to start with with one of the books I'm most excited about, and that is Trials of Ashmount. This is an adult fantasy by an indie published author who I consider a friend, and he was so kind enough to send me this beautiful hardcover, and I'm going to be honest, it's one of the, my favorite covers ever. There's just something about it that scratches that fantasy um, cover itch for me. It's one of the reasons I love landscape covers because it gives you like a sneak peek on the environment that you'll be in and it makes me very excited to visit whatever place this is. This is a debut novel. It's grimdark. I think also has like some dark comedy, which is totally on my alley. It's first to a series that is full of magic um, following multiple perspectives and the first sentence right out of the gate kind of makes me laugh. He pissed himself. I'm intrigued. <laughs> I'm very much going into this one blind, just how I like to go into most books, but it mentions a magical school called Ashmount where different branches of magic are taught, but it also might be covered in treachery. It sounds right up my alley. Um, it's kind of reminding me of the daughter of Redwinter a little bit, which I loved, so that has me very pumped. And then I have Witch King. I actually want to do a full video review for this one because it's got the whole book community excited, including me. More Martha Wells is a reader's wet dream, even more so that she's diving right back into fantasy. And with the look of this cover, some classic sorcery fantasy. We follow a couple characters here, one of them being Kai, who is a demon inhabiting a human body. And at the very beginning of the story, he is slowly regaining consciousness after being held captive. Um, finds out a magician wants to take him and make him his familiar. Um, not a rule that Kai wants to fulfill. I'm excited to read this um, new world that Wells has created. I know her previous fantasy are very loved, and I hope this brings in new readers and satisfies her current ones. So I actually have a couple sci-fi here. I've been in a like sci-fi kick recently after reading The Stars Undying and The Scourge Between Stars. I have reviews for those up as well. I'll link those down below for you if you're interested, but I really enjoyed both of them. I might as well like keep that going because I read way more fantasy than sci-fi. So when um, that ball gets rolling, I want to keep it rolling, you know? So first I have Paradise One. Orbit Books is publishing this one this month, actually, I believe, yes, April. Actually, both of the sci-fis I'm about to talk about are from Orbit Books, which shouldn't surprise anyone. But this one sounds so freaking cool. I've actually read one other book by David Wellington called The Last Astronaut that I thought was just okay, but I always said I read more from him because I think what he writes is really creative. If I remember correctly, I think it was his writing style that was a little bit iffy for me, but it's been a few years, so I, I believe that book came out in 2019, um, so it's been a while, but 
Um, his writing style could have changed, gotten better, who knows. This is supposed to be uh, more of a sci-fi adventure. Though it does sound, and also like it looks like a horror, um, it's told from the perspectives of two main characters, one a police officer and the other a doctor. And as punishment for their failures, they are sent to check up on a deep space colony only to have everything go wrong and they have to fight to survive. Um, fight what exactly? Who freaking knows? Maybe like Alien and Predator. Whatever it is, I'm excited to find out. The next sci-fi I don't have a physical copy of right now, that is The Blighted Stars. This is going to be the newest book from Megan E. O'Keefe. It's coming out in May, so I'll be reading it around that time. I quickly became a fan of hers when I read Velocity Weapon. I thought it was a fantastic sci-fi, and now that she's completed that trilogy, we have the start of a new series, and this one sounds even better. It follows two characters who are stranded on an Earth-like planet, and they are rivals one is a spy and the other is the son to a powerful family and they have to work together to survive. I love the way this author writes and how she comes up with fantastic relationships between characters that makes you root for them the entire time, even the villains. Like somehow this author writes villains where you just want them to win in the end, but obviously that would be very bad. So I can already tell that um, this is going to have all of that and more. I'm super pumped for it. Honestly, this and Paradise One, though they both sound very familiar, I'm hoping that, I'm hoping they're not. It's a little, they, they both literally follow two characters who are stranded and have to survive. But you know what? I'm fine with that. That's actually a trope I really enjoy. Next, I have One for My Enemy. I feel like this is a good buffer between some of my more heavier reads. Um, this was sent to me from Tor. Uh, thanks Tor, I appreciate it as a physical reader. Now, I know this does have a prominent romance in it. In fact, it's compared to Romeo and Juliet. Um, ew. <laughs> but I'm in it for the rival witch families this follows, who apparently like fight for power in New York City with their like criminal empires. That's like the part of Romeo and Juliet I really liked. Um, and maybe that's like the, the main focus here. Let's hope so. This sounds um, kind of fun to read. So obviously it's an urban fantasy. It has dark magic, lots of characters to follow. Actually, this book has artwork on the end of papers. Let's see if I can show you that. So there is the front, obviously one family, and then the second one as well. Actually, this entire book has artwork throughout it, which I think is really, really cool. So there's some more. Am I expecting for this book to blow me away? No, but I'm willing to give it a shot just for the fun way it explains how these two families get into a lot of drama and maybe murder. I'm here for the murder, okay? Let's go ahead and talk about another retelling, though a very loose one, I believe, and that is In the Lives of Puppets. So this is a Pinocchio-inspired story with a twist, and that it's full of machines and androids. It kind of reminds me of like the Lunar Chronicles a little bit, just off first impressions, but we follow an inventor who finds an old building in the forest to live there, when suddenly a baby is brought to him by a couple who want him to take it and take care of it. Maybe he turns his baby into a robot, who knows? That'd be kind of rad. Um, TJ Klune is a writer who knows how to hit you in the feels, as I'm sure this will be no different. He also writes incredible stories within like beautiful worlds, and it's already starting very well for me as I love this cover art, and all of his books have that same theme, and you just can't help but want to read them. So I'm very excited to have yet another TJ Klune book under my belt. Lastly, I want to read Untethered Sky. This is a novella from the one and only Fonda Lee. It's another very hyped release. Um, it's following Esther and the story focuses on a part of her life where she bonds and trains her rock, which are like giant falcon-like birds basically. And then we see her becoming a skilled manticore hunter. I've talked about this book a few times on my channel already, so I'm, I'm trying to keep this one very vague and short and you'll be hearing more from me about this one. But anyways, despite its length, I've already heard great things about this one and the depth and emotions it has. Um, Fondly is a writing wizard, so it doesn't surprise me. And I think the subject matter is perfect for an SFF novella, um, but we'll see. I always want novellas, I always want more out of novellas, I should say. I don't really want to be introduced to a incredibly huge detailed world in a novella because that's that's where I'll want more but with this being like a moment in time kind of story I think it'll work better 
but we'll see. I'll definitely have a review for this one um, in the near future. Alrighty, so those are all the books that I plan to read this spring. I'm really excited about all of them and hopefully I can get my reviews up out for them in a timely manner. Tell me below what you plan to read for these next couple months because I would love to know. And before you go, don't forget to check out the Basmo app and their brand new AI feature where you get to chat with books and find out more about them. Like this video, it really helps me out. Subscribe if you are not and I'd love to have you here. Until we meet again, happy reading.